Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper. We continue our coverage of the sport. This time today, we head out to University Park, Pennsylvania, the Penn State Nittany Lion wrestling team under the direction of uh, coaches Kale and Cody Sanderson. Well, they, they won the season. They won the season out. Also, uh, one of three, picking up a Big Ten uh, championship this year, shared existence there. Cody joins us. Cody, how are you? Doing great today. Thank you. Number one spot uh, for you guys again on the year. Uh, I know that's probably not the overall goal. It's the overall goal to make uh, the conference championship and the NCAAs. But uh, at some point, there has to be some, you know, hey, we're doing a good job. There's got to be some pride there, isn't there? Yeah, getting some acknowledgement of where the team stands and the success of the individuals and the team together, that's nice. But like you said, the focus on the conference tournament, the national tournament, the rankings are one thing. Getting out there and performing in the postseason, you know, that's a different story. You got a ton of ranked guys, men. You've had a handful of them all season long. Let's start with your junior All American, who is just flat out fun to watch wrestle, Nico Megalitis. Yeah, Nico. I mean, we've talked about him before. He's just a guy that just loves to compete, hates to lose. He does everything right. Um, he is maybe the most disciplined athlete we've ever coached, and you know, you see that in his results. You know, he's a hundred percent focused every time he wrestles. His mistakes, he hardly makes any, and he just finds a way to get on top. And what's he, what's he, how does that translate into uh, life, uh, classroom, uh, campus life? How does that transfer? What kind of a young man is he off the mat? Uh, he is 100% focused all the time. I mean, almost too much, I would say. You know, he, getting him to eat a, you know, a, an M&M <laughs> is tricky. I remember he, he let me know this summer that he ate a couple of chicken wings or something, and you know he was he was happy about that because he just doesn't put that kind of food into his body. Um, his school is kind of an interesting thing too, because he I think that he approaches school as, as something that he doesn't want to get in the way of his wrestling. So the way he does it is he just goes ahead and gets A's and gets his homework done right away, so he doesn't have to worry about it. And you know he's doing great because of it. That's a unique way to look at it. I can remember waiting till the very last minute, worrying about it all the way to that last minute, mm-hmm. and then uh, not being too happy with the overall result. But you know what? That was my college experience. <laughs> I remember you being a, a a pretty studious student athlete when at Iowa State. You seemed to care quite a bit about grades. Yeah, I did. I mean, that was just the way we were brought up, though. When we were when we were kids, it was just the rule. If we didn't get good grades, we weren't allowed to wrestle. So, you know, it's just something you just got to keep on going and understand that that's the key to success, working hard. It's hard to be sloppy in one aspect of your life and be crispy or crisp in all other aspects. So, you know, do well in school, do well in wrestling, social life. It all goes together. Well, crispy is Nico Megalutis. He's number two currently or number one, depending on what you look at. A 23-2 and two record has he at 125 pounds, and we're looking for a very exciting Big Ten tournament for him. Redshirt freshman Jimmy Gulliban out of Latrobe, PA, remains uh, number 15. We think... He's uh, actually better than that at 33. Can you talk to us a little bit about not just his record, but his overall performance? Well, he's doing well now. There was a a part of the season where he was struggling. Uh, He took some losses that that were hard for him. But uh, what he did is is he just kind of renewed his commitment. He's been focused on doing all the right things. He's always trying to do extra work and get ready to go. A lot of him is just coming down and getting his offense going. With his speed and his strength, when he's attacking, he's just a tough guy to beat. I'm excited where he is right now. You know, um, two months ago, I was a little bit worried about him, but right now, I think he's ready for this postseason. How is Zane Rutherford not number one? Uh, undefeated. Uh, some of his moves uh, are just absolutely fantastic. Uh, crisp. You mentioned crisp earlier. We'll use that word again, but crisp and clean. Uh, very uh, definitive. No, he's not tentative in his shots. Um, so my question to you is, how is he not number number one at 141? Uh, well, <laughs> I don't really do the rankings. There's some great wrestlers out there. You know, we'll leave that to the experts to decide. But um, you know, he he's a guy that believes he's the best, and his goal is to be a national champion, and that's why he's having success. Like, and and he's a true freshman coach. You know as well as I do. There's certain uh, pressures on student athletes and being a true freshman especially at the level that Penn State is at uh, is, is awfully difficult how is he handling it he's doing a great job I mean, he's just uh, he was raised right I mean I, I remember uh, it was a little while back someone asking Kel about, about him and his work ethic and 
uh, Kel mentioned that he'd like to send his own children out to Zane's parents to have them raise them. So, wow. uh, you know, he's just, he's a great kid. He does things right. He has a, a very mature perspective on the sport, uh, you know, and, and you see that in his success. You know, he's, he is successful for a reason. I remember Intermat had him coming out of high school ranked third overall. And so all eyes, obviously, were, were turned to him. We didn't know if he was going to redshirt for you guys in his first year or not. But obviously he's performing well in the maturity rate. Isn't that part of the, the whole decision-making process of how you're going to put him out, when you're going to put him out, how mature they are? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's something that we consider. We didn't know really where he was going to be. We knew he was going to be great coming in. We had a lot of uh, high expectations for him. But, you know, this this summer he came out to the summer session and he – was able to, to, you know, we saw him get on the mats a little bit with some of the guys, and he just looked like uh, he had all the right stuff. And we started practices this fall, and you know, right away he, he was making an impact. You know, he was able to go with some of the best guys in our room fairly quickly, and, you know, he ended up getting in, winning wrestle-offs, and doing well in our first open tournament. And we decided he'd be the guy to go with. Cody Sanderson, our guest, uh, we're talking about uh, the team that is the Penn State Nittany Lions, currently ranked number one in the land as they head to the Big Ten Championships in Madison, Wisconsin. Coach, we're talking about Zane Rutherford. It's obvious to see, to me anyway, uh, in his style. He's got a really nice style, but I think it's complemented by his freestyle ability. Would you agree? Yeah, he had a lot of experience a couple summers ago wrestling in one of the world championships. He was able to spend some time training with the, the national freestyle coaches, and, and he gets to get a better feel of, of hip position, leg position, and then just an opportunity to compete at that next level. You know, that, that kind of knowledge and experience is just invaluable, and he's really used it. I really like what I see, and I like that. I would even like to see some of these kids uh, continue doing both uh, of freestyle and, and Greco. I think there's a lot to be learned from both disciplines, and I think there's a lot of body growth that comes uh, uh, from 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 both uh, styles of wrestling. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I know it was something, again, I guess from our experience and myself and my brother's experience growing up, my, it was my dad's opinion that we should wrestle in whatever style there was out there just so that we could learn, learn positions. Um, you know, if anything, you know, learn throws, learn upper body, learn freestyle so that if you come up against a guy that's uh, good in, in those disciplines, you can feel what they're doing, you know what's coming. And, you know, I, I don't necessarily know what, what's the the right balance uh, for young wrestlers right now. Um, I don't spend a lot of time coaching young wrestlers, but I do like the idea of them doing some freestyle and those guys doing some grackle and just learning that. And then, you know, someday they have that success beyond their college years, then if they already have, you know, the foundation laid, then they have an opportunity to go on and win those World and Olympic medals. He finished third at 157 just last year, and and I got to ask you about Dylan Alton. Uh, he's making uh, 157 pounds, uh, a rather complex weight class for everybody, including those people that are doing the the rankings, but even more so perhaps for for his competition. Talk to us about um, uh, talk to us about Dylan. Well, Dylan, he had a pretty major shoulder surgery in the off season, so it took us a while to get him back into the lineup and get him going. But uh, you know, right now, he's at that point in the season where every single match he's getting better. Yeah. And you know, unfortunately, he didn't have a lot of time to get to this point this year. But you know, that's that's another part of sports. You know, injuries are going to happen, and I think that he's responded well. Um, you know, he's a guy with with high goals. Also, you know, he wants to be the best, and he doesn't want to settle for anything less than a national championship. He does know that uh, you know that weight class is tough. It's going to be a fun one to watch at the conference meet. That's a fun way to watch at the national tournament because there's so many good guys in there. Uh, but Dylan's proved that he can be there. You know, he he took third as a freshman. Uh, you know, last year he was in very close to making it into the semifinals. So, uh, you know, we expect big things from him. How difficult is that as a coach to convince your your student athletes that it's okay not to settle for second best? I mean, a lot of guys do. They just they, they practice to the point where that's enough, and then they compete to the point where that's enough, and I might win. I mean, how important or how difficult is that job for you coaches to, to take a young man like Dylan Alton after surgery and say, hey, you know what, you, you still got this. You know, we can make a couple slight adjustments, and, and, and you're going to win this thing. Well, I think with that, you're talking a lot about uh, the internal motivation of the individual. And we get a guy that... that it's not important for them to win or it's not important for them to be the best when they get to us, they get to college. Uh, it is a challenge to get them uh, beyond that. Uh, you know, the, 
really the key is to make sure that you're bringing guys into the program that, that don't want to settle for a second. You know, they want to be the best, and they're willing to work and do what it takes to, to get there. I am so happy for David Taylor this year. Um, last couple of years having to, to be in that uh, whole Kyle Dake, uh, David Taylor uh, – emotional roller coaster and the competition and the lights and the whole bit yeah this 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 year is just you know what it's david taylor and he deserves so much for being that guy if there was a perfect wrestler out there and and somebody i really truly enjoy talking to watching compete uh knowing that he's going to take that next step and it's going to be the right step whatever that is i mean david taylor is that guy for me uh, 26 and 0, number one at 65, and and, and graduating. Um, what a great kid! Yeah, David's been a it's been a joy to coach him, to have him on the team, and I think he's well, one of these these wrestlers that uh, the wrestling community, the college wrestling fans are going to miss. You know, he's 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 fairly unique. There's not a lot of guys like him that come along very often, and uh, you know, it, I think it's been. I mean, outside of being his his uh, opponent, which has not necessarily gone well for most guys, but as far as a fan watching the sport, uh, you know, he he makes it better. He makes it more fun. Uh, a lot of young kids in the country they watch him. They watch all the wrestlers, and they say, "I want to be David Taylor. I want to be a guy that's always scoring. I want to be a guy that does it with a good attitude and has fun and and uh, is humble in his interviews." And so. You know, we're definitely going to miss him, and I think the the college wrestling community is going to miss him also. I don't know if it's humble. Um, I think it's matter of fact. I think it's a conversation. I mean, there's no there, there's no crime in, in talking about the truth. He's forty four and zero against Big Ten foes, coach, and and uh, that's something to stand up and talk about. His international skills, uh, you know, in freestyle, that's something to stand up and talk about. Uh, I've I've loved watching him explore all the ranges. Uh, and all the disciplines, but man, this this year, as we go to the Big Tens in Madison, this this one uh, looks to be in hand. But I don't think David Taylor is expecting uh, uh, an easy ride at all, is he? Well, you know, we learn in, again in sports and wrestling. You know, there's there's no such thing as a sure thing. Uh, you know, there's some things that are pretty close to it, but you know, it just uh, it's not the way it goes. But you know, David, right now, he's doing what he needs to do. Uh, you know his his the last couple of weeks just his focus, um, just the look in his eye, especially this this last match at senior night. You, he looks like a guy now that's on a mission. He wants to go through that tournament and he wants to dominate all the way through it. You know, there's no question about it. He wants to get out there, and he wants to get bonus points in every match he has from for the rest of the season. I don't know if it was a completely done deal at the time, but you remember when he was selected to come down and get the Schultz at the at in Stillwater, uh, Oklahoma. You were there, I was there, uh, and David Taylor got up, and and I don't believe he had any notes. But, Coach, I don't know if you had seen that side of him. I surely hadn't. But when he got up to talk with the confidence that he shared, even at that age, I knew we had something special at that point. Were you amazed with his ability to get up in front of a uh, an audience of his peers, as it were, uh, and and his seniors, people that are highly respected in the sport? But, man, he delivered a... a, a an address, a, a speech that is uh, is still fond in my memories. Yeah, well, in the in the recruiting process, you know, we we had definitely gotten to know know David well at that point, and uh, I was impressed with his speech, but I wasn't surprised by it. Just uh, you know, getting to know him and and knowing how smart and uh, you know well spoken he was, it was it was enjoyable to listen to him do that publicly, though, and give the other people there an opportunity to hear him. Yeah, and it was thorough. Gosh, it was thorough. I, I'm, I mean, I speak for a living. That guy is, uh, I really hope he turns that into something other than uh, just an acceptance speech for trophies because it dude can really okay. talk and motivate. I like to listen to him. Fun guy to be around. Good job, David Taylor. All-American Matt Brown, he's a junior for you this year out of uh, West Valley City, Utah. The pipeline uh, appears to be open and flowing out of Utah. Uh, he's number four at 174 pounds, sitting on a 24-3 and record as we head to the Big Tens. What can you tell us about Matt Brown? Uh, he's just a tough kid. You know, He's a tough kid. He works his rear end off every day, and he wants to be a national champion. He's had a couple tough losses. Uh, you know, he out of Minnesota, it was kind of a, a screwy match. He made a couple mistakes. Uh, you know, sometimes you can be over-aggressive, and we'll never fault somebody for that. We want him to be aggressive. We want him to be aggressive and make mistakes, and he made some mistakes, but we're able to learn from that. 
then he came back and he was in I don't know how many overtimes with with Perry from Oklahoma State out here in Rec Hall. It was a, it was a heck of a battle. Uh, you know, I think we were able to figure some things out there though, and we're better prepared for him going into that national tournament because of it. Ed Ruth is. Uh... Another one of those guys that's going to be graduating senior for you, number two at 84, uh, 25 and one on his ledger. What, what about Ed Ruth? I mean, it's not been, um, and I, you'll never. I never want to compare athletes. You know, uh, this young man versus this young man as far as the the experience, because I think everybody brings something different to the table, to the room, uh, to the sport. And I think he did. I, it's been uh, an awful lot of fun watching him win. Um, what's he been like to coach? Ed is a unique individual, and he's a unique guy to, guy to coach. Uh, he he is motivated differently than a lot of people. Uh, you know the the same conversations that might work for you know, David or Nico. It's going to be a little bit different with Ed, but uh, the guy has really just done a great job. You know, again, he works hard. Um, he has a maturity about him when he wrestles. He really is somebody that a lot of the younger guys learn a lot from too. Also, just his his approach. You know, he he wants to win. He loves to win, but um, he kind of rolls with the, with the ups and downs and, and knows that things don't always go well out there. But the way he he approaches it and adjusts is is something that our younger guys are able to learn from. And uh, you know, almost without question, you go up and down our lineup, talk to guys, and you know they'll tell you that uh, they spent some time uh, sparring and play wrestling with Ed, and they learn a lot from him. And he's a guy that likes to do that. You know, he'll he'll take a, a younger guy or a smaller guy and just just roll with them. You know, 30, 40 minutes. You know, half speed wrestling and, and teaching them. And not so much you know verbally, but just kind of working them through the motions. And and uh, he does it in a quiet manner. You know, he's not really uh, an outspoken leader, but you know, he, he's somebody that the young guys on the team all look up to. Mm, I know he got a big standing ovation um, in front of sixty five hundred fans. At Rec Hall, and uh, dude is, uh, you know, I think he's saluted well for going out in a blaze of glory, as Pat said, uh, mm-hmm. with the first period pin at the final f- final match of his uh, his career at home, anyway. And uh, you got to like that, you know. He's he's uh, going to make a statement, and uh, I think perhaps that may be his moves make the loudest statement of all. You agree? Yeah, yeah. He. Just the way he wrestles and the way he competes. Uh, they they love him here at Rec Hall. Yeah. He's, he's been uh, wowing the fans for four years. <laughs> Ten pins, eight tech falls, six majors, 25 and one, 45 career pins, third time, third all time at Penn State. And he's got a record of 127 and three all time. Uh, just an outstanding young man, but boy, can that kid wrestle. Uh, and he's looking for a Big Ten championship and he's looking for another national title as well. And I have a feeling uh, you guys have him just dialed in on this one, man. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Thank you for Ed Ruth, by the way. How about Morgan McIntosh? This is a young man that, uh, again, got to watch down and uh, got to meet down in, in, in Stillwater at the Hall of Fame and, and uh, got to know him and his father and a and, uh, fine young man. And uh, has a, a, a tremendous weekend in, in Minnesota, uh, defeating at the time the undefeated Scott Schiller. Talk to us about Morgan McIntosh. He's coming into his own, isn't he? Yeah, he is, and I think it's at the right time. Uh, you know, we had high expectations of him from the time he got here. We know he can be good. We know he is good and, and, and will continue to get better. I feel like right now we're finally seeing that confidence uh, you know, in the wrestling room. Even in the weight room yesterday, I just, you know, I've watched him walk, you know, from one exercise to the other, and I could see just in his demeanor and his body language that that's a guy that's planning on winning a national championship this year. And, you know, you know, watch out. Watch out for him. You know, when he, when he has that attitude, he's a tough guy to beat. You know, Gadsden, number one. Uh, Schiller, number two. And, and uh uh, Morgan McIntosh, number three, and that may be, depending on what, what uh, ranking you're looking at. Uh, I tell you what, they're all three great kids. Those are the kind of kids that, that uh, Coach, I know you love to 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 work with, every one of them. And they, they try so hard. I mean, watching that McIntosh-Schiller match, that was, that was good wrestling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I've watched Schiller. I don't, I don't know Schiller at all. Um, but uh, he, he's always looked like just a, a tough guy, a tough guy that would be fun to coach. Yeah. Um, 
you know, Iowa State kid. Uh, you know, I've known known him a little bit and, and of him since he was a young boy. And you know, I just like watching Russell. I just I like that kid. I think he's a great kid too. So it's a fun weight class. It really Definitely. sure is. Jimmy Lawson, Tom's River, New Jersey, 14th ranked at 285 pounds. Coach, here's the deal. Heavyweight, and I've said this uh, since before the season, and it's even more true today after we've had seven different uh, changing of the guards, as it were. In other words, we've had seven different guys wear the number one uh, tag at heavyweight. Uh, Jimmy Lawson is working really hard for you guys. I know he is, and it's a tough weight at 285. 16 and 5 on the year. Uh, talk, talk to us about Jimmy, but also talk to us about the heavy heavyweight class itself. Well, it's, you know, heavyweight class is, it's hard to predict coming in every year what you're going to get from heavyweights. Uh, you know, so you have young guys that come in unexpected, older guys that mature. Uh, it's it's always a little bit entertaining. Uh, this weight class, especially this year in the Big Ten, is, is pretty darn tough, you know. Going into it, you know, when it's anybody's guess who's going to come out on top. Uh, and right now, you know, we, we actually have you know, Jimmy Lawson. He hurt his knee back in, in January. And then he wrestled, he's been off, he wrestled this, this last home duel and, um, you know, he, he just wasn't maneuvering well. So, you know, we have some decisions to make what we're going to actually do because we also have John Gingrich on our team who's uh, had a great season. You know, I think he's like 20 and 5 or 20 and 6 on the season, plays to the Southern Scuffle. So, you know, as far as uh, team personnel decisions, you know, we, we've got we to get that figured out, you know, right away. Hmm. Well, I know that's going to be a subject for you, Casey, and and uh, KL to go over, and decisions will be made. Whatever it is, I'm sure it'll be for the best of the team. Nittany Lions ended the dual meet season with a 15 and one mark, seven and one in Big Ten action. And as I said earlier, co-owners of the Big Ten uh, uh, title for uh, the last three years. Uh, outstanding job there, by the way. Sharing it with Iowa, Minnesota, was an interesting year for sure in the ten. Uh, largely regarded as one of the uh, best, if not the toughest, conference in uh, wrestling right now. Um, right now, I think you guys are looking for the Big Ten Championships. That's the next target for you guys, the 8th and 9th of March. And it'll be at the at the Kohl Center in Wisconsin. And Wisconsin's going to do their absolute best to put on a big show. I understand ticket sales are very strong. The lower bowl, I believe, is uh, sold out. Yeah, that's what we're hearing. We're hearing that they're working hard. They want to make it a great event. That there's been a lot of ticket sales, and, and as far as wrestling goes, I mean, it's it's going to be a great tournament to watch. You know, two days of some of the best wrestling in the country. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's a shame that the Big Ten doesn't broadcast every match uh, on every mat for the two days that is the Big Tens. But uh, I tell you what, there are fans around the country that are going to hang on those Big Ten finals live on Sunday. I know you will. You're going to be Mr. Intensity. I've, I, I like uh, the Cody I see in the corner, but I, I like the Cody that I get to talk to when uh, it's not quite so intense. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes you got to adjust to whatever the circumstances are. Well, the Family Clothesline isn't your only sponsor throughout the year, but there are some folks I know that uh, perhaps in a broader statement that you'd like to thank uh, uh, besides, uh, you know, maybe maybe a big shout-out to your fans. Who do you want to recognize in particular uh, that have been there and, and really have had the back of the team for the season? Well, it's just, uh, you know, Penn State Wrestling, just like other major programs, you know, it's a big machine. It takes a lot of people. It takes a lot of support. You know, I think that the, the biggest key to, to our success and our support is just the, our wrestling alumni here at Penn State. You know, they, they continue to stay engaged. They continue to stay, stay supportive, um, and, you know, in, in, in all kinds of different ways. You know, it's you know, it's a major financial undertaking to, to have a program where we want it to be. And, and these guys step up. You know, they step up every year, and they continue to do it. And, uh, you know, they're able to, to help these guys here achieve their goals and lay the groundwork for the future. Cody, I'm looking forward to seeing you at the Big Tens. And, of course, uh, uh, we'll be traveling down to uh, Oklahoma City together to see the uh, uh, to compete at the NCAA championships as you guys uh, go for yet another one. It's going to be an interesting uh, road to it, but we're looking forward to seeing you and the rest of the Penn State Nittany Lion fans and faithful. I appreciate you taking the time today. Oh, thank you. It's going to be a fun, uh, fun next few weeks. Special thanks to Pat Dungay, too, for... For uh, doing the job he does, I don't think there's a better SID in the country. Surely not one that cares any more than Pat does. So a little bit of a tip of the cap to a guy who does a job really, really well. Oh, Pat. Pat is uh, excellent at what he does. We love having him around. I don't know what we'd do without him. Cody, thank you. And best to your family. 
All right. Thank you.